unfortunately need a little more time to resolve the technical issues that led to the repeated pauses in Game 1 between The Walking Zed and Team Coast. Well, we anticipate that we will have the issues resolved in approximately one hour, and we apologize for the delay and appreciate your patience. But as we continue to address the issues on stage, I want to welcome North America's 2013 All-Star Jungler and current coach of Cursed, St. Vicious, to the analyst desk. Thanks for joining us, St. Hello. How's Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let me start off maybe by recapping what we saw a little while ago, the first game between Team Coast and the Walking Zet. What was your general impression of that great performance from Coast? Uh, <laughs> it was pretty embarrassing, I guess, for <laughs> North America. I don't know. I mean, like, they had the early game lead, and it looked pretty good. And then, like, they had that one team fight uh, right outside the entrance of Dragon where... <laughs> Uh, I guess like they initiated in this in this really weird area and uh, NASA's cut off to the left and it's just like a really badly set up fight for them because Shivana got in to the team and then Edward just came in and just like flash ulted and you're through. talking about the XDG gamut matchup. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I was about asking that. about the promotion matchup, but we actually can go into this a little more. How do you think that played out overall that match? Oh, uh, the Gambit one? XDG yeah. Gambit, yeah. Oh, I don't know. It honestly looked like Gambit was just trolling after a certain point. I mean, they had like like. Do I get a death cap or an hourglass on Shivana? Like these are hard decisions <laughs> that I need to make. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. It's from what I understand, XTG has only been playing for like four days. Uh, they've been on break the the whole time. So I think that they're, they're they can be a lot better than that. Uh, and it showed like in the early game, like they made the right decisions in the early game, and they played the landing phase pretty good. But like once it came out of that, like their team fighting looked just horrendous. Well, then let me ask you now about the matchup between The Walking Zed and Team Coast. <laughs> what do you feel about that one? I don't know if I call that first game a match, but... Uh, wow. It, 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 I mean, nothing you against... You like more than double if. <laughs> no, nothing against Walking Zed, but uh, I don't know. It just looked like Coast like, came to play. Like Their job's on the line, and it shows. Like They're, 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 they're hungry, and they, they want to keep, keep playing. Uh, do you think that there's any way The Walking Zed will come back? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, like, I don't think that that, that first game is a good indication of, like, what, what the next games are going to be like. Uh, I mean, that's their first, that's a lot of their players' first game on the land, and I'm sure people are, like, really nervous. And people always said, like, well, we don't know how they're going to do on land, or, like, we don't know how their land experience is. Like, oh, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it actually means a lot. Like, people are afraid to make certain plays that they would usually make, or, like, they'll miss skill shots just because of nerves. Like, a lot of people don't understand that, like, you just need to take a deep breath and, like, just chill out, you know? I mean, it's just the same as, like, playing at, playing at your gaming house or at home. The, maybe the pause coming in, is that something that The Walking Dead will be thankful for? Uh, I, I think, in a weird way, it, it helps them just because uh, getting your nerves settled, actually getting a game against your opponents, and then saying, okay, what do we actually care about in champs? Like, what do we actually care about strategically? Uh, and it gives you time to sort of recoup your thoughts. Normally, in the hit of the moment, you go from game one to game two. Maybe your mind is still in the last game, and you're, like, frustrated, or you're still thinking about what you could have done. And, you can't think in the past and win the next game. You've got to think, okay, what do we do differently? What do we change? What do we keep doing? Uh, and having some time to do that, I think, will help these guys. Whereas a team like Coast is probably a lot better at just knowing how to prep for game two right away. Well, at the same time, it can sh you can shoot yourself in the foot because like, I know from personal experience that if you have a long time between games, you might get into some stupid arguments like, oh, like that game, just for example, you could be like, oh, you guys messed up so bad in like X lane, and oh, how did you miss your skill shots? And then you just get into this back and forth banter, and then you don't like actually resolve like the real problems and like what you're going to do next time to fix those problems, and you just kind of play the blame game, which is super easy to do. Like in this high pressure situation, like emotions are running high. Is there anything, an example that you guys sometimes know that's something I really mess up when I'm extremely nervous? Is it like CS or decision making, or what is it that it comes down to? Uh, smites. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the smites. No, I mean I don't. I haven't been nervous in so long in a game, but it, yeah, I, I definitely think it affects other people more than others, and I, I think skill shots are probably the biggest thing. Like uh, I'll have scrim people, and I'm like, man, they they would usually hit that like 90% of the time. And then they'll play a game, and you'll see them on land, and they'll just miss like every time. Uh, you mentioned that you don't didn't get nervous anymore. Is that one of the reasons why you thought it's time to call it quits as a professional player? Yeah, actually, a lot of people had that. Who said that? I can't remember. But they're like, if you're afraid, if you're not afraid of losing anymore, and then was that Loco? I can't remember. Yes, I think it was yeah. Loco. His vlog, maybe. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Rest I'm in peace. <laughs> rest in peace. He'll come back. Crush tarts broken, James. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I, 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 uh, yeah, I know. That's I just like honestly got tired of playing and scrimming all the time and it just it burns you out like you're playing like eight ten and a, ten hour days like you wake up you scrim every single day six to seven days a week and 
it just it just burns you out. Uh, I mean, I think it burned anybody out, and that's why you see a lot of like the old players. Uh, they just start enjoying the game less and less, and I think that's that's what happens to a lot of people. How is it for you, Doublelift? Because I think it was around last year once that you mentioned that you needed a break for a while to get away from it. And how do you deal with that? How do you keep that fire going? Oh, well, last year and specifically, I didn't. And that's why I didn't play as good as I should have. Like, uh, I played really well like between the splits at All-Stars, and then I was like just okay to good uh, for the rest of the year. And then I finally got my break. You know, After Worlds, after I did the Analyst Desk thing, I got my break. And I think like even though yeah, our land performances haven't been that great, um, I've been playing better than like ever. Like I feel like I've been playing better than I have been in the last like year or like year and a half. And it just comes because it's true when you play like ten hours a day and there's so much pressure on you and everyone's like criticizing you and telling you how bad you are and like who's gonna be better than you pretty soon. Like you just kind of you cave into the pressure and you just like stop uh, being as productive with your time as you could be. So like you know like I made a lot of changes. You know I stopped caring what people said about me and like I. I just made a lot of changes to like how I think about the game and how I'm going to improve. So that's why, I don't know, I feel like I'm going to be way better coming into this year. I actually have a question on that. So what, what drove you to this like new outlook on, on the game and on computing? Um, well, a lot of it is, like, you kind of reflect, it's kind of hard to reflect on, like, uh, an LCS split or, like, a month, a bad month that you had. But it's way easy to kind of reflect on, like, your year. Like, what did you accomplish this year? And when I look on, like, season three and I look back, like, what did I accomplish? It was, like... Well, it's not as much as I did in season two, that's for sure. So, I want to, like, I, I was like, what made me so good, and like, why? Wh what makes like a good player like really good is like a p somebody who only cares about getting better. Don't care about what the community says about you. Like, I just uh, when you get away from the game, you kind of have time to let the information sit. And uh, yeah. saying you going uh, getting away from the game, but actually still having to call shots as you are now the coach. How has your day to day changed um, being a coach rather than being a professional player? Um. I mean, I watch a lot of team scrims, and uh, I do a lot of stuff with, like, the analysts where uh, we'll talk about, like, what needs to be focused on and what needs to be presented to them, uh, the players, because I think that uh, a good learning environment for the players is really important and, and making... As you can't Just saying, like, you shouldn't have done that or you shouldn't have done this, it, it's more focused on towards what you what you should be doing and, like, what... what be Like, you should be proactive rather than, than negative to, to the people, and... I think uh, as long as the team like gets together and like they really enjoy their scrim time together, and they're all happy like playing with each other, then then they're just gonna grow. And I think that's like the most important thing as a coach is like that I'm just there to like help them grow and uh, to make sure that to like ping off the ideas off of them and uh, yeah, just I don't know, just to be positive for them. Be positive, of course. Uh, rather, a lot of changes in that lineup. Let us start maybe if we go through it by I will dominate, of course, coming in directly for you. What do you think he brings to the team that makes him play maybe differently or, or in other ways? Uh, I mean, Dominate and Boy had a history. They played on uh, Dignitas together. Um, I guess he has like more of an aggressive play style. Uh, I don't know. It, it, yeah, just like a, they just have like a really good chemistry between Boy Boy and him, and I think that's like kind of like their play. Like that's like what. I, I never like compare like junglers like just as individual people or like mid laners as individual people. I think you gotta like look at the combo together. Like you know you got like Diamond and Alex Itch or uh, Smithy and Man Cloud, like or Bengi and, and Faker. I don't like Faker's not he's like an amazing player, but he's he's nothing without Bengi or and vice versa. Like you get you have to think about like the combo together. I think that's important. Well, what do you think then? In, like, because I feel like the jungler does affect like all the lanes. Is it is it really like? Every jungler plus lane matchup, like is it, is it jungle plus mid and jungle plus top and jungle plus duo lane, or are there tendencies? Or like, do certain teams need you know jungle mid synergy? Certain teams need jungle top. Like, what are the dynamics there? Well, jungle mid so important because uh, I mean you have, you can uh, affect all the other lanes a lot better. Like, if mid wins really hard, you can roam to top, you can roam to bottom. You have control of dragon. Uh, you just it's a lot easier to affect the other areas of the map just because of the, uh, the position is is on the map. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's why it's the most important. Uh, final thing about the lineup is Quaz. As a lot of people have said, it is an incredible talent in that top lane. How have you experienced working with him for the short while? Uh, Quaz is a very reserved person, um, but I, I think I honestly think he's a beast. Uh, I'll go as far as to say I think he's the best top in in NA right now. Okay. I, I I mean it's like a bold statement, but I think the people see tomorrow that he's going to back that up. Double cool. if this is a new curse lineup scare you. Uh, yeah, mostly just Quas. He does a lot of stuff that no other top lane does. And I don't want to, like, give it away right now because that would be super BM. But he does, he's really smart. Like, he's just super smart about the game. And mechanically, he's, 
you know, he doesn't miss CS either, which is really rare. Like, top laners um, attract, like, a kind of different demographic of people. Like, when I think of top laners, I think of, like, Darian, like, the kind of, like, Rambo, like, you know, he doesn't care. Like, somebody who just doesn't care, and they go they go crazy. Um, it's not, like, such a calculated, methodical player like Quas who, who, I don't know, to me, he calculates, like, every decision he's going to make in advance because he's just really smart about the game. And I actually really like the new Curse lineup. I think it's it's... It's cool because it's kind of like the cursed lineup from the beginning of 2013, where it was like Voy Boy's the best top player in NA, and he's going to dumpster everybody, and Voy's going to make up, and it's awesome, and it was a really cool style. Whereas you've got CLG, where they win from the bottom lane all the time, you've got teams like SKT, uh, T1K, they have a really long name, uh, <laughs> and Faker is like the guy who makes all the plays, and that's really interesting. And you had uh, SKT T1S, that was all about Marin in the top lane there, and I like the teams that are like, well, you know what, Quas is like the really huge carry here, he's going to go crazy, if he gets going, even if he doesn't get going, he's going to find a way to get going, and a lot of things come from him. So I, I like the new dynamics that come from the team. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting to watch. And um, Zane, I know you have some very strong opinions on this, so I'm just going to tap into it as we have the Battle of the Atlantic. You were, were talking before all, uh, also about the XEG Gambit matchup. And just in general, uh, how do you think things are going? What has surprised you or hasn't surprised you at all? Uh, I mean, honestly, like most of the matches have gone. I didn't think the CLG match would have been, been so one-sided, to be honest. I honestly thought that that could have gone either way. I thought it was like 50-50, but then, yeah. It, sorry, double lift. That was bad, <laughs> dude. That was sad. But Not really. It was no, I, I don't know. It's just funny, the whole the whole Battle of the Atlantic thing, because it's, it's like a fight for the bronze medal. It's like, oh, well, we're, we're never going to be as good as those Koreans, but... Uh, it's like, we, we want bragging rights for e over each other, you know? <laughs> Uh, well, actually, what I like about the matches we've seen both last weekend and this weekend is every single match a European has won. And now that we've got a match with no Europeans, of course the game is stopped. <laughs> oh the European God. can't win, so we can't, we can't play. Doubles, is there anything you want to add to that? Do you feel like you're playing for second place all the time? Um, I don't know. It's a start. Like, I like the... I like that there's competitiveness between the regions because when one region is better than the other, it just makes the other one stronger. And then when that one gets stronger, it makes the other one stronger. So they like help each other. So like, you know, when you saw C9 play against Fnatic, then I think that sparked like a really sharp increase in like the the skill of the like both scenes because you saw like both the best teams from these regions playing against each other. You saw like, wow, this works and this works, and wow, these guys are like pretty equally matched at Worlds. And like, it just kind of inspires better players to come up. And you saw that, like, there's so many roster changes for season four, and like, everyone's so much better now, in my opinion. And I, like, I hope you can see that change come in for next year at Worlds. What a beautiful message and things here. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, now I think we're ready, so we're gonna send it over to Pastry.